So guys, you see this right here? I got to start my countdown timer because my millennial keeps telling me that I'm long-winded. I got a 40-hour class. And I got to sit here and talk for 40 hours. I'm 10 minutes into hour number two. And this dude says, yo, can you shorten these segments? So don't make me start with you, man. All right, look, I'm going to speed this up so I don't lose the attention span of my tech crew, all right? <laughs> well, I'll tell you about blaming me for having corona. I'm, I, you guys, you really relax, all right? Page 403, section 26.2. We mentioned what the CFO, what we're looking at, right? A couple little bullet points. Now, let's get all touchy-feely with this piece right here, right? Department of Financial Services, go right into that paragraph right there. Department of Financial Services, highlight that. Jump over that issues, and, but highlight regulates agent and agency licenses. And then jump over a little bit at the end of that line, headed by Chief Financial Officer. Guys, this next line, I literally crossed it out. Why? Because I already jumped over on the other page, the Financial Services Commission and the offices, right? Because one thing that I, I like telling you guys a story that starts somewhere and goes somewhere without stopping and making a couple of pit stops. You know what I mean? And so we're talking about the chief financial officer and his department of financial services. Well, we're getting our license when we put that application in with the, with the division of agent and agency services. Where are we paying it to? The DFS. So everything that we're focusing on right now is all about the DFS, the DFS, the DFS. So that's why I got rid of that next line there, okay? Now, if we jump down to the end of that first paragraph right there, you see that word quasi-legislative rulemaking and quasi-judicial powers? They didn't really do a very good job explaining what that is, right? I could do that real quick. You know what quasi-legislative is? Remember Schoolhouse Rock? I am only a bill, and I'm sitting on Capitol Hill. Oh, I'm off to committee, and I da na na na. Yo, did I drop? Uh, man, I thought I dropped R2. I didn't. I just dropped my I heart the dark side pin. Anyway, so what quasi legislative rule is, is rulemaking. All right, that bill, if you remember that song that we were getting down to. What he had to do is somebody found that there was a, a part of society that needed to be adjusted, so we make laws, right? That's why we're learning all this. Laws, laws, laws. Well, in order for them to make the law, that had to be something that they were trying to fix. Well, if the chief financial officer is in charge of the entire business of insurance, and he has this Department of Financial Services with sworn law enforcement officers to protect minimum standards, what if... We actually had a clever criminal that did something that had never been done before. Wouldn't you want the person that's designed to go ahead and help protect us to have the power to close that loophole? Quasi-legislative powers. Remember, schoolhouse rock. The, he can propose a bill. Is a bill a law? Nope. It's sitting on Capitol Hill until they approve it, all right? So just remember that. I just want you to, to highlight quasi-legislative rulemaking quasi legis uh, quasi judicial um, judicial the quasi judicial is these are easy to keep separated because the legislator for me really doesn't mean anything I'm not a big politician type of guy so that that wasn't the easiest word for me to gravitate to but you're gonna have the quasi legislative and quasi judicial quasi judicial is easier to kind of comprehend because the Department of Financial Services, since they regulate the business of insurance, if they catch you doing something wrong, they can put a consent order in, okay? They don't have to send you to the circuit court. They don't have to go through prosecution. What they do have the power to do is actually conduct a hearing, and if you agree to the terms of the hearing, you give up your license, but you don't actually have to go to court or anything like that. That's a quasi-judicial power, the power to conduct a hearing. OK, so that's an easy when you hear this quasi, it's not like that Bush Gardens ride, that wooden roller coaster is pretty dope. Yeah, Bush Gardens. Set it up, man. Guy like me. I got a lot of people. I got a lot of people. I should be a, I'm, a, I'm almost an influencer. Hook me up. Yo, you guys tell everybody Jason at the insurance school needs to get some kind of endorsement from Bush Gardens. Right. That'd be fun. I'll hook you up, too. OK, uh, so remember that the quasi legislative, quasi judicial. Just remember judicial hearing 
that's a little bit easier way legislative is that I am only a bill now go, go right down there to the 26.21 I have like four point I have four minutes and 50 seconds left I got this I got this all right so now we're on 26.21 we're still on 403 but we're on general duties and powers all right uh, on that first bullet point right there, I just want you to highlight and force the insurance code. What on earth is the insurance code? Jay, I thought we were learning about laws. We are. That was me. Like all these years ago, I'm over here writing this class and I didn't know anything about any of these things. I'm over here researching this, right? And they're like, oh, well, we enforce the insurance code. I'm like, what's the, I thought you guys enforced the in insurance laws and rules. What do you mean the code? I swear to you, I spent like an hour looking up all these codes and rules and it always brought me back to laws. And I was thinking it was a code, like a code of ethics or something like that. And I lost like two hours of my life because they enforced the insurance code and I didn't know that code was just another code word for laws, all right? So anyway, highlight that. So what does the DFS do? They enforce the insurance code. <laughs> I love this next bullet point. You really don't have to highlight anything because check this out. Their powers and authority may be expressed or implied in the insurance code. Implied. Yo, do you want to be regulated? Like, I don't want to be on the bad side of somebody who can regulate me based on implied laws, okay? And I, I mean, I'm cool with it because I'm a compliance officer. I, I, don't, I don't pitch heat. I tell you the truth. It is what it is. You want it or you don't. Hasta la vista. If you don't want it, I'm not going to go ahead and bend over backwards to convince you that if you don't have health insurance, then you're stuck paying for it on your own. That's it. We're, we're, we're just here to communicate some benefits this next one down third bullet point down you know that may isn't that kind of funny they may it's so polite just highlight they conduct investigations of insurance matters that's it that's what the dfs does they have an issue they investigate it the next bullet down can collect highlight that jump over publish information regarding the code Okay, what does that mean? They, if they have information pertaining to business of insurance, they can tell the insurance agents what to do with it. Duh, of course they have that authority. All right, uh, that next bullet point down, <laughs> let's just, look, can I just, can you just highlight for humorous purposes, shall have additional powers? I, I, I don't need to say anything about that. This next bullet point may employ actuaries. Doesn't matter, so don't highlight it. The next bullet point down, don't highlight that either. All right, so one thing that I think that we need to point out here when it's general duties and powers, you know who I didn't bring up yet? Insurers. Remember, the Department of Financial Services, we're talking about you and I. You're going there so that way you can get an insurance license, right? I'm authorized by the Department of Financial Services to teach the class. Everything that the Department of Financial Services do has to do with licensees, people with a license and agencies, because a, an agency is just a person like you and I that built a team. That's it. You don't need a special license for that. All right. Now you flip over to page 404. Boom. Yo, remember when I was telling you that Jimmy Patronus and... The, and the state of Florida is supposed to be like, yo, in and out Burger, come over here, bring business to the state. Shipping, shipping, come here, we'll unload your ships. Like we're over here trying to just, it, I feel like I'm in a third world country flea market over here. These guys are over there like with a bullhorn. Hey, no, 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 we got produce over here. Have you tasted a Florida orange lately? So that's what Jimmy Patronus is here to do. And that's what this bullet point at the top of the page says. Shall develop and implement outreach to encourage additional insurers into the Florida market. Well, it's businesses in general, but yeah, they want to bring insurers into the marketplace. Why? Because if we have more insurers, that promotes capitalism. Prices go down, guys. Prices go down. So what do we highlight in there? Shall develop and implement outreach to encourage additional insurers to the marketplace. That is recruiting, guys. Don't let them use fancy words there, right? Next bullet point down, may send legal process. And highlight, so highlight that and then jump down and highlight unauthorized insurer. 
All right, legal process. Let's think about it, man. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Oh, oh. I only have another bullet point. I will shut the mouth. Dismiss. It's always interrupting somebody, man. Man. All right, so that last bullet, uh, let's see, Not it's not a last bullet point. Right under that unauthorized insurance. We'll get into that, all right? Because that's, that's its own little conversation in and of itself because it's like a vocabulary thing and I've already, you know, I'm trying to ditch the Sandman who's trying to pull me off the stage right now. So uh, let's see. That next bullet point highlights shall receive inquiries and complaints from Karen. Ka it doesn't say Karen's, does it? I got you. It says consumers, right? Highlight that shall receive inquiries and complaints from consumers. And then prepare information. Highlight that to inform. Con and then highlight that consumers and then jump down a little bit. Advocacy for consumers. So what does the DFS do? They take complaints and we already discussed that customer service. They also get information from consumers and help help consumers solve a problem. Uh, let's see. Now, this is, I, I really, in this, in this bullet point, these should be multiple bullet points here, but see in the beginning, this is how it's going to be in the test, all right? So when they ask you a question about the Department of Financial Services and they ask you how long do you have to respond, if the question says anything about a customer complaint, okay, a customer complaint is not an investigation. It's just somebody complaining. They could be wrong, right? So if you get a word that says customer in it, your response time is 20 days. Why? Because the Department of Financial Services strives to solve all problems in 30 days. So if you were the client and you're complaining and they're trying to solve your problem in 30 days, it would be unreasonable to give me 30 days to answer your question, right? I have 20 days. If it was an investigation, I have 30 days, okay? So now in that bullet point, see, it started out, I had you highlight, shall receive inquiries and complaints from consumers. That's how it's going to be worded on the state exam. If it came from a consumer, it is 20 days. Make sure those words stay together, okay? Now let's jump down to the middle of this paragraph here, and it says, uh, administrative penalty for failure to comply with Jump down to the line right under with a written request for information concerning a customer complaint. So please highlight that administrative penalty for failure to comply with a written request for information concerning a complaint. Okay, so uh, last but not least, that last bullet point. We're going to talk about that more in depth, but that whole that whole bullet point is pretty important, but we're not going to talk about it right now. So when we get back to the next section, we're going to jump into policyholder rights. Why? Because I told you, man, customer service isn't here to just make you feel good. It's here because we have rights. So let's talk about them.